What is worth it? Worth watching? Worth making? Both. All meanings of the word. I won't define what I mean. Just watch the video. <laughs> Cyberpunk began as a tabletop role-playing game in the 80s under the name Cyberpunk 2013, the future is 10 years ago, moving up in year with each edition. The Cyberpunk Red edition, which takes place in 2077, was an attempt to revive the setting with a new update, and by that I mean it's barely any different, copy-pasting entire blocks of text from the 2020 edition of the game, and acting like the settings changed meaningfully because the lore is slightly different. The old publisher, R. Talsorian Games... I guess is how you say that, is still around, though it appears the cyberpunk trademark is now owned by CD Projekt. And that's where they enter the story. They made Cyberpunk 2077. Is it poisoning the well to call this game still broken? The game released to a lot of mixed reviews claiming the game is busted but everything else is good, which surprises me because it's mostly just references. In any case, the game still sold well enough for CD Projekt to get Trigger, anime savior, to make a show about it. Trigger, after having just worked on Star Wars Visions I haven't seen it, worked with CD Projekt to make Cyberpunk Edge Runners for Netflix. I'm not going to talk about the story, or even how good of an anime it is, I'm barely going to talk about the anime at all. Rather... The most obvious thing is the accidental poster girl for the show, Rebecca. She probably would not have been very notable because she's just yet another archetype Trigger likes to use. If it weren't for it getting public that CD Projekt Red did not want her, and Trigger stood their ground. It also helped that she was referred to as a lolly in the publications, which I don't agree with, but I'm not going to argue definitions. As a consequence, despite not being a major character for most of the series, Rebecca is now the face of Edge Runners. When I watched the show, I thought Lucy was the obvious manic pixie dream girl unironically made to sell figurines, but the fans didn't like her as much as Rebecca. Despite not being an overtly sexual character in the series, the same way Lucy kind of was, the fan base around the show treats Rebecca as if sexuality is her only trait. Why do you come? Jesus I find it really strange that characters who were shown totally naked or having sex don't get this treatment. Why is that? Anime fans love flat girls? is because she was called a lolly. That's the inciting incident that caused anime fans to become attached to her. Personally, I didn't find the horny stuff in Edge Runners to be off-putting or offensive, except for the fact that it was all straight, but Rebecca becoming a rallying cry of lolly rights meant that the show was no longer about whatever the metaphors were getting at. Edge Runners was a show about a lolly named Rebecca. I have no problems with Rebecca the character. If anything, I'm glad Trigger left her in. However, the scandalousness of her deviceness oh fucking hell. Rebecca being talked about in the way she was made her go from a character within a story to a symbol of sexualization. What I'm getting at is that the consequences of this anime is that the anime has become worse off? Fuck, is that really what I'm saying? The anime as a result of becoming a fake weeb culture war fodder has contributed to the further animated sexualization of straight people when Rebecca should have been gay. The show is written by Polish people, animated by Japanese people, about American people. American cyberpunk media has been criticized for being orientalist, driven by an 80s fear of Japanese technological expansion that halted in the 90s. It's outdated and racist, but it's an aesthetic that still gets used because of how detached from history the concept now is, even in Cyberpunk 2077, the game, and Edge Runners. <laughs> I don't think calling the anime or game racist is going to contribute anything of value, even if it is true, because it is. So instead I'm going to talk about postmodernity or history, anyway. In Hiroki Azuma's Otaku, Japan's Database Animals, he talks about how anime was essentially birthed by Americans importing Disney into the country, and how some Japanese audiences, quite reasonably, found their culture turning into schlocky fantasy television to be disturbing. Edge Runners is very much American equivalent. Yes, it is a bunch of foreign creators using imported American art, but they've used American culture to tell their own story. Genuinely, the first time I watched the first episode, I said, they made an anime about America, so the main character is, of course, a school shooter. Americans foolishly make callous art about our own violence, but when a different country does it, the impact is quite different. The way America as a country and culture gets portrayed by a bunch of non-Americans is the opposite of the status quo, where Hollywood and Disney almost monopolize big budget films and project their culture across the globe. That's how anime was created, after all. In a way, the punk in cyberpunk stands for post-post-colonial art. 
That doesn't make any sense. As a result of the anime, 2077, the game, sold astronomically higher than ever before, even better than when it was first released. The tabletop has also sold incredibly well, but I think this was the case before the anime, I haven't looked into it any- <laughs> god. I dodged talking about my opinion of the anime, but I'll talk about the game some, the video game. <laughs> Jesus. It's obviously still busted, its workers were not treated fairly, the writing is silly, the gameplay is really basic. It's almost like Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, but with slightly less obvious racism against Asian people invading the West Coast. Plus, how many games can you crucify a guy and have the final supper with fucking Keanu Reeves, what were they thinking? My opinions aside, the fact that anime helps the game sell more feels disgusting. This game had a stinky reputation that suddenly got forgotten because cool anime. Edge Runners gave 2077 a free pass to a lot of people that otherwise would not have given CDPR more money. Who knows if Trigger got any of it. Remember when Transformers made a TV show to advertise Hasbro plastic to undiscerning children and it worked? Apparently you don't have to be a kid to fall for it. I don't mean to downplay anybody who thoroughly enjoyed the game slash anime and their experiences. I'm sure there are plenty of people who play the game due to the anime and was impressed by it. My point in bringing this up is the morality of it. Do you consider it ethical this piece of art was made as a PR campaign? I presume a lot of people with faith in markets probably think it's fine, but I have my doubts. How do you feel getting so invested in an advertisement? Probably the weirdest thing to happen out of all this is they put an anime clip into the game to advertise the anime as if nobody looking for it hadn't seen the scene before, and they included some random edge runners gear and outfits you could use. It felt very awkwardly shoved in, to the point where you have to text everyone about it because they presumably didn't want to call back any voice actors for this update. 2077 tries very hard to be an immersive, but random anime and everything being awkward about it annihilated any semblance of this being connected to the game's setting. It feels forced in, for a lack of a better phrasing. If there really was a dude who attacked Arasaka recently, why wasn't he mentioned until you found his name on a random brain dance in the trash, especially since it was much more recent than Johnny Silverhand, which I would think it would have been big news, I thought, before remembering that the game came out first, so they couldn't have had the foresight to write the two plots together. The anime worked a lot better completely disconnected from the game, but Night City just refuses to cut the umbilical cord, doesn't it? With all that in mind, I hope it's obvious why I couldn't just talk about if the anime was good or not. Edge Runners didn't spring from nowhere, it was birthed by companies trying to tie it to a franchise one with a lot of controversy and history behind it. I can't talk about cyberpunk without talking about too much cyberpunk. Edge Runners could not have been made the way it was if not for CDPR. Hell, they put Atom Smasher in the anime for no other reason than he's an iconic guy from the game. Having no knowledge of the continuity of Night City makes the anime unable to stand on its own, and, and made worse by the fact that it's in a franchise while pretending not to be. The death of the author cannot apply here when the author made it impossible. So was it worth it? Worth what? Worth is often a reference to monetary value. I could easily break out a calculator and bust out how much money CEOs made off of this thing and declare it a waste, but we all know that's not what you wanted when you started this journey. Then what is its worth tied to if not money in a capitalist system? Worth the time it took to make and watch? worthy of esteem and praise, worth existing as a piece of art, worth some purpose it could have been made for? I don't think such a question is formable, let alone answerable. Is Cyberpunk Edgerunners worth it? What is it? Every person that came into this discussion came with their own predefined it. For you, maybe it was, is Edgerunners worth watching? For you, maybe it was, is Edgerunners worth its Reddit page? I can't possibly answer every single possible definition, but I'm going to try. There's one video I found called Rebecca is Worth It, which uses the funny clips and images to assert that Rebecca's sex appeal is worth the trouble. So I guess if that's your prerogative, one more porn character makes the show worth it. 
In a video titled, Cyberpunk 2077, is it worth it after Edge Runners patch 1.6? The creator asked the question, is the game worth playing now that it's been updated heavily and Edge Runners has introduced it to new fans who might want to play it? The answer is yes, but not on console. Which to me would mean that the anime fulfilled its advertising purpose. Considering the large amount of positive reviews the show gets, I think it's fair to say the consensus for it being worth it as a show to watch would be yes, but not to everyone. That's subjective, obviously. Considering Trigger's making their own unique merch for the show, I think it's fair to say they think it's worth the money they made from it. Almost. So, despite mostly saying negatives about the show and its consequences, it appears the answer from most perspectives is... Yes, anyway. So, how can someone say no? Well, it wasn't gay for one thing.